Syria's opposition has rejected the new international plan to end the country's internal conflict. They say they don't want members of the Assad regime to be part of the political transition. A meeting in Geneva of international powers agreed that a transitional governing body should be formed, which could include both members of the opposition and the current government. RT's Maria Finoshina has more from Damascus. The Geneva peace proposal was the latest attempt to reconcile the divided sides in the Syrian conflict with a unity government. But that hope was already fading, even before the delegates in Switzerland returned to their homes. The Syrian National Council, or SNC, and the Free Syrian Army, the political and military forces spearheading the uprising, both financed from and based abroad, have made it clear there can be no solution with Assad in power, as allowed in the Geneva Agreement. The home-based opposition is less direct, though some still warn it's too late for dialogue. The Anand Sar party boycotted May's parliamentary elections. Its leader has said the time has come for all sides to make sacrifices, and the government should lead the way. The peace plan will only work if Assad hands over control of the armed forces and security to the interim government. They should start seeing the Free Syrian Army and others who are against them as the opposition. No everyone agrees. Some say the Syrian opposition is too fragmented to be trusted. Only those who really want dialogue should be thought of as legitimate opposition. And who is that? It's a battle of wills, the geopolitical interests of big regional players. But we're sure to see more games being played to sabotage the peace efforts. The Syrian people we spoke to welcomed the idea of a unity government, but with some reservations of their own. If the opposition is internal, national, there is no problem. But if it's an opposition with foreign passports, that's just not acceptable. We understand what we want, but we cannot understand what the opposition wants. Apart from Assad to go, what else? Someone like Galion or Seda, heads of the SNC, we don't even know who they are. We don't need them. With so many unknowns, analysts say the Syrian opposition has both the covert and open support of nations who demand regime change and back the rebels, with tons of weapons channeled into Syria to fuel the conflict. The first thing to do is to take away these arms, otherwise no peace is possible. But that can't be done quickly. Too much money has been spent and too many parties are involved. Meanwhile, according to the Geneva document, the Syrian people are the only ones who should decide their country's future. But they are concerned they won't get the chance. Of course we, the Syrian people, should decide what we want for ourselves. We knew that already. They brought foreign terrorists from outside and money. It was a conspiracy from the first day. We can stop the violence while foreign countries are financing and supporting the rebels. But it seems that no matter how much international game playing there is, it will be Syrians themselves who bear the brunt. The dream didn't last long. Less than two days after the latest peace initiative was forged in Geneva, skepticism is growing that an interim governing body made up of the Syrian opposition and current regime will ever become more than just a solution on paper. With more lives being lost every day in this war-torn country, this bloody saga looks far from over. Marie Finoshna, RT, from Damascus, in Syria. Peace efforts at the Geneva conference were just a talk, says Asia Times correspondent Pepe Escobar, who believes that the rebels and the parties backing them only want regime change. They will never lay down arms, especially because from the past two months, they have been heavily weaponized by both Saudi Arabia and Qatar. So just like the original Kofi Annan plan was bound to fail from the beginning, what is being discussed in Geneva is also bound to fail. It's for show, it's to tell the international community, which basically is a few NATO countries, the US, uh, Israel, Turkey, and obviously the Russians and the Chinese and the BRIC countries are not fooled by it. And most of the developing world, the non-aligned movement, nobody's fooled about it. Uh, what these uh, main players, uh, foreign players who want regime change in Syria, 
they have to pull some wool in front of the international community. So they have the Kofi Annan plan, they have the Geneva discussions, and it's absolutely ridiculous because they don't even bother to invite Iran and Saudi Arabia, which are both major players in the serious situation. It's ridiculous.